All right. Now for um, to give us the welcome for tonight and uh, to talk about the mission and purpose of Cosmos as well, Mohammed Shakir, whose resume and bio sketch I found to be quite interesting. Clearly, he is he's done an enormous amount. He's been in South Florida for 43 years. Many of you, I'm sure, already know who he is. By being in South Florida for 43 years, that makes him a native, by the way. Um, <coughs> but he is a veteran of the, <laughs> of the U.S. Army. But he has done an enormous amount of work in our community, serving on so many different boards. But the one thing I found interesting is he's the founder of NUR, the NUR Center for Women and Children. It's a safe house for the Asian women and children in distress. Now, typically you find women who find houses, safe houses like that, but to hear that a man did that is just an awesome, awesome feat. Mohammed Shakir, please come to the stage. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Let me clarify that Noor Center could not have been formed without the help of the woman who is my wife. Most Reverend Archbishop Thomas Winsky, Honorable Senator Brainin, Dr. Martha Perez, members of the school board, past and present honorees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is indeed my pleasure to extend you salam and greetings on behalf of South Florida Muslim community. As South Florida Muslims, South Florida Muslims celebrate 50 years of their presence. Cosmo's story becomes even more intriguing. How this small group of people was able to carve its own place in this community to define its role in terms of engagement with others in the community on the basis and the rules of Islam and American values that teaches us coexistence and peaceful existence with the fellow citizens. During the past 50 years, Muslims, Christians, and Jews have met each other on different forums. They have met as teachers and students, as doctors and patients. They have interacted as business partners, good neighbors, and mentors. These encounters have left an, some indelible impressions on two generations of Muslims. Those of us who were here during 9-11 remember many friends calling us the day after 9-11 just because they cared about us. They remember when 50 bullets were shot in a mosque and swastika was drawn on that mosque in Kendo and the police tried to downplay the incidents as a children's mischief. And a stern rabbi chef confronted the police officer and asked him if this swastika was drawn on a synagogue or sprayed on my house, would you have said the same thing? Leaving him speechless and completely stunned. These relationships have been mutual. In 1993, Shalom International organized a counter rally against Hank Pritchard's white supremacist rally on Miami Beach. I called Mufti Hassan, late Mufti Hassan, a Muslim scholar, and I asked him my intention that I plan to attend the event. He said, not only you should go, but I also would like to come along with you. The next day, a bunch of puzzled Jews at Holocaust Memorial looked at these two people, one in a long tailcoat with a white cap on his head, another one clad in suit and tie, until Rabbi Tabashnikov spotted us, and he introduced us to Rabbi Baumgard and late Rabbi Rimmerman and Lerman and many others who were in the audience. The perception, however, remains that Muslims are an isolated, disengaged community. And this is the perception that Muslims wanted to redefine, and for that purpose, they created Cosmos. 
The story of Cosmos is actually the personal journey of these people who have lived as uh, our MC suggested, like me, for 43 years, who have lived through different times, and now they still wanted to, they were struggling with a constant perception that we are disengaged and we're not involved. So this story goes like this. In 1973, a young nervous Muslim, young, young nervous student walked in Temple Israel on 19th Street, his first time in a Jewish synagogue, and he met, he was greeted by Rabbi Tabashnikov. And this relationship lasted until Rabbi Tabashnikov passed away in 2003. When Rabbi Tabashnikov moved to Temple Bed Brewer in Kendall, he organized a class on Islam for adults. And in 10 lecture series, one lecture was on Islam and international relations that eventually made to FIU as a course. Sometimes these hiccups and disappointments were troublesome. One time I remember Stuart Merkin, a former AJC president and, inter and interfaith partner said, I remember the days when on Miami Beach, businesses openly displayed signs that Jews and dogs are not allowed. He said, today we own Miami Beach. We did it the hard ways. We engaged public, we talked to people, we flooded the libraries. When the libraries did not buy the books, we donated them. He says, keep up the good work. One day it'll hit the critical mass and you will see things start bursting around you and you would know how. And when I look at this crowd tonight, I'm encouraged. I'm optimistic about that day of deliverance that Stuart Merkin predicted. I visited Israel in 2002 as a project interchange along peace activist. When my name was recommended by Joan Kanner for that, someone questioned his, her wisdom and asked her, you couldn't find anybody but a Muslim, especially a Muslim from Pakistan. Just last November, Dr. Katz organized a Muslim Jewish relations series at Jewish Museum on the Beach. And one of the speakers at that, in that series was Dr. Mehnaz Afridi. She's the director of Holocaust Center at Manhattan College. She is a Muslim and she's a Pakistani female. The relationships are all about trust and confidence that we place in people. Sometimes, sometimes I attempt to opine my opinion, my opine in the, par in, in the newspapers, and despite some professional retouching by the journalists in the papers, it ruffles some feathers. And when that happens, my friend who's sitting somewhere, Yael Hirschfeld, she plays the advocate for me, and she tries to explain to her ADL colleagues what I meant, not what they read. The past has given us mixed return on these engagements, and for the future we're waiting for Mr. Merkin's premonition to come true. Building trust and confidence requires education. Muslims lag, Muslims lag behind all other nations in education. As one of, the, one of our past keynote speakers once said, that even democracy is in danger without education. Muslims all around the world are struggling to establish democracy. They're stop trying to establish good governance. We in the West, if we really want peace here and abroad, we need to assist and aid them in education, not weapons. Last year, we floated the idea that seventh largest public institution does not have a program for one-fifth of the world's population. Wouldn't it be a great idea if Sam Huntington's clash of civilization would be countered by Rose, Dr. Rosenberg's own vision of cooperation of civilization. Luckily that evening our keynote speaker was Dr. Rosenberg. He didn't miss the beat and he readily said, let's do it. You are a highly influential crowd, a very important people. You can lend your expertise, advice, and influence to make this reality come true. FIU could have a world-class Muslim World Studies Center, and we can demonstrate to the world 
that this community is a poster child for coexistence and peace. We have done a good job in building community service organizations, UHI Clinic, Sahara, Noor Center, Merge USA, Project Downtown, are shining examples of community service in our community. The State Department routinely shares American experience with foreign visitors when, who they invite. Annette Alvarez, my friend who's sitting here, director of MCIV, never fails to share the Muslim experience with them. Last year, Eve Ghani, a French visitor, came and saw. What she saw, she went back and wrote to French Foreign Services and expressed her impressions. French Council General Gael de Mijaner called and he wanted to see me and he arrived at the county offices with his two staffers and wanted to know the secret of this model community. The success of Muslim community, Muslim story, as we told him, is the story, is an American story. America allows people to excel to their best potential. They are not isolated and ghettoized as they are done in Europe. And Americans by nature love to support those fighting for a chance. South Florida Muslims chose constructive engagement. Their collective efforts, both theirs and their friends, are coming to fruition now. As Dr. Abdul Hamid Samra, our Imam at Miami Gardens Mosque, a few, months, a few weeks ago in a Friday sermon said, living in America is an ilma, a gift of God. Living in America, if it's a gift of God, indeed peace, peace is a divine, divine gift, but we must work for it together, and we must keep it together. I hope that you all can come together and reach out to someone on your table and strike a friendship tonight, and let's work for a sustainable peace and understanding in this community. Thank you, and may God bless the peacemakers. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.